Hello everyone and welcome to lecture. I'm uh, very excited for this lecture because the thing that we're going to be talking about today is power series. And um, this is uh, one of the, the fundamental ideas and applications uh, of infinite series uh, in um, all areas of applied mathematics. You can literally find this uh, from physics to mechanical engineering to electrical engineering. Um, really, in uh, every different area of mathematics, you can find some uh, different application of a power series. And um, more specifically, the next lecture will be about what's called Taylor series, which uh, kind of generalize some of the things that we're going to be doing in this lecture today. So um, this is a very, very exciting topic. And the idea here is uh, the following. So, so far, you know, we've considered a series of numbers. And this is of the form say from k or k from 0 to infinity to a k where this is going to be a naught plus a 1 plus a 2 and so on and so forth all the way to infinity. Power series uh, kind of asks the question or begins to ask the question what if instead of considering an infinite series of numbers we consider an infinite series of functions. And in general, this would be a series of the form from k equals 0 to infinity of some kth function, fk, of x, which is going to be f0 of x plus f1 of x plus f2 of x and so on and so forth, all the way to infinity. And so this is an infinite series of functions. And there are actually uh, many different types of uh, infinite series of functions. Um, in general, the convergence of this is going to depend on x and on um, fk of x specifically you know, how this these functions of k and x are behaving as k gets larger and larger and larger this is a general function series And so the, the, the specific type of function series that we're going to be considering is what's called a power series. And so I'll start by defining what a power series is uh, that's centered at some point x0 equals 0. This is the infinite sum from k equals 0 to infinity of some coefficient ck times x to the power k, which will end up being c0 plus c1 times x to the 1 plus c2 times x squared plus c3 times x cubed, and so on and so forth. So this is the first term, a0 in the series. This c1 times x is the second term. This a2, the second, so the, 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 I guess the third term of the series, but a2 in our numbering scheme is c2 times x squared. The third term will be a3, and so on and so forth. One nice way of thinking about a general power series 
is thinking of it as uh, a polynomial with infinitely many terms in it. If c0 is a real number, this is just a constant polynomial. Then a linear polynomial, the c0 plus c1 times x. A quadratic polynomial, with c0 plus c1 times x plus c2 times x squared. And so on and so forth, all the way up to you know, any n that you want to continue this up upwards to. And if we just continue this process uh, to infinity, if this is a convergent series, then we have an infinitely many, uh, or a polynomial with infinitely many terms in it. So I'll give you a very simple example of this. Let's consider the power series that we get. When CK is just the, the one set, or any, even not, not even just one, any value of A, any constant value of A. This is going to be a plus a times x plus a times x squared plus a times x cubed, and so on and so forth. And it doesn't take us long to, to recognize that this is the same thing as the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of a times x to the k, which is a geometric series. So we know that this diverges if x is equal to 1 or absolute value of x is greater than 1. And um, specifically, it's going to converge to a over 1 minus x. So this Equality is only true when the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1. And it diverges when the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 1. But so this is this is very neat. This is telling us that a power series with constant coefficients is the same thing as a geometric series. And um, not only that, uh, this geometric series at any point x that right, we know converges to a over 1 minus x when the absolute value of x is less than 1. Um, so just this one example alone uh, kind of uh, forces us and you know, hints at this idea of... Um, changing our viewpoint uh, about uh, infinite series of functions. And uh, at this point now, we want to start kind of thinking about these power series in general as um, a series representation for a function on a given interval. Like the absolute value of x is less than 1. That means that x is between 1 and negative 1. And what our geometric series formula is telling us is that this infinite series converges to this function of x for any x from negative 1 to 1. So we want to start thinking of this as this infinite series of functions uh, as being convergent. It converges to this function of x for any x in this interval. Um, or equivalently, that this infinite series of functions is uh, an infinite series representation right, of this function for any point x in this interval. So this maximum value of the absolute value of x is actually a very special value for this, this problem and for all the types of problems like this. We call it the radius of convergence. Um, and the center point of this series, the series is centered at 0. 
So uh, for a given series like this, one of the things that we're going to note and we're going to see is that uh, they're going to converge inside some radius of convergence, or for all x between x0 plus r to x0 minus r. And in the lecture, we'll develop a nice way of always being able to get a radius of convergence for many, many different types of problems. But uh, this interval here is negative 1 to 1 in x. And what I want to do right now is show uh, exactly what this means. So this is a plot right here uh, in GeoGebra of um, our, our function, the function uh, 1 over 1 minus x. And uh, this is the blue curve right here. This is what this function looks like. And we're also plotting here Sn of x, which is the nth partial sum uh, of this, this series. So we're, we're starting at uh, just the first two terms. But you can very easily you know, just go to the zeroth order term if you want to see this starting at zero. So it starts out as a constant. And then the next term, uh, the zeroth term, the constant term plus the next term is this red curve right here. This is the sum of the first two terms. This uh, is the sum of the first, uh, the zeroth term, the first term, and the second term. This is the sum of uh, up to the uh, x to the power three, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna, uh, plain animation that shows it up to n equals 20. And uh, hopefully you're seeing that uh, this uh, the series, the nth partial sum of the series of uh, functions is converging to uh, the original function that it represents, which we expect from our geometric series formula. Now, this is only valid uh, from negative one to one, but this is what we're guaranteed from the geometric series formula. Um, and you know, if you want to see it for a much larger number of terms, I'll just change n to 200 here. And uh, you can very clearly see that this function is being uh, accurately represented on this, this interval. And this is because this geometric series converges uh, every single point in this interval from negative one to one. And so before I go through and define the general radius of convergence and how to find it, what I wanna do is do a couple more examples to show you how powerful this, uh, this really is, even just uh, with using geometric series. So let's consider the following example. We'll look at the summation from k equals 2 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the k over 3 to the k times x to the k. This is a power series, uh, the coefficients of which are given by this function of k. So ck is 2 times negative 1 to the k over 3 to the k. And uh, you can go through and get each individual term of this series if you want to kind of look at the individual term by term um, definition of the series to get each individual coefficient and be some good practice. But uh, what I want to do almost immediately is just kind of show you that we can rewrite this uh, very in a very straightforward manner as a standard geometric series starting at k equals 2. Uh, we have a constant term here too, so we have 2 times, and note that you have negative 1 to the k, x to the k, and divided by 3 to the k. This is the same thing as negative x over 3 to the power k, or the uh, summation from k equals 2 to infinity of 2 times 
r to the k, where r here is equal to negative x over 3. So it's a geometric series, but just with r that uh, is dependent on this x uh, in a very special way. And uh, we know that a geometric series, if the geometric series starting at k equals 2, and k equals 2 to infinity, this is going to converge um, using uh, the previous method that I showed you to figure out the formula for this convergence. Uh, so when you start the geometric series at k equals 2, this is going to converge to 2 times r squared over 1 minus r. And this will converge when the absolute value of r is less than 1. That's the range of r values for which this formula is valid. Well, if we kind of translate this back to x language, we end up getting that this is going to be 2 times negative x over 3 squared over 1 minus negative x over 3, or 2 ninths times x squared over 1 plus x over 3. And so what we've just shown is that this infinite series of x's converges directly to this function, which is a more complicated function than the previous example. But it converges directly to this function of x right here. And this is only valid for uh, values of x where the absolute value of r is less than 1. So the question then becomes, what does this mean about x? Well, this means that uh, negative absolute value of negative x over 3 must be less than 1 for this equality to be valid, which we can rewrite to say that the absolute value of x must be strictly less than 3. So this uh, equality between uh, this infinite series and this function is valid when the absolute value of x is less than 3. So for this problem, the radius of convergence in x is equal to 3, and this series is centered at x naught equals 0. So the interval of convergence is going to be the interval from um, always from x naught minus r to x naught plus r, which is the interval from negative 3 to 3. So for all x in this interval, uh, this equality is going to be valid, and you can say that this infinite series converges to this function. So I went into GeoGebra and modified the, uh, the script a little bit to uh, put this function, f of x, in, into it, um, as well as modifying the coefficients of my series. Uh, but uh, the main idea here is still the same. This blue curve is the actual value of this function, uh, 2 times negative x over 3 squared divided by 1 plus x over 3. And the red curve right here is the nth partial sum of the series, um, starting at n equals 2 here. But if we go to the next term in the series, the third term in the series, this is what it's going to be. The fourth term in the series, and then the fifth term in the series, the sixth term in the series, and it sure looks like this is converging on the interval from negative 3 to 3 to uh, this uh, correct value of the function. And if I play it all the way up to n equals 20, I think you can see very clearly that this is the case. And just to kind of really illustrate this point, if I increase the number of terms in the sum to be up to 200, the 200th power of x, you get almost an exact match, except for when you get very close to the boundary, in which case uh, you have to choose more terms to converge.
but um, you see very clearly, hopefully, that this series is directly converging to uh, the function 2 times negative x over 3 squared divided by 1 plus x over 3, which I think is very, very neat. For one final example, just to really make sure that um, we uh, hit all the main points here, let's look at the summation um, k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times x minus 3 to the k. This is an example of a power series that shifted by 3. So the x naught shift here is equal to 3. But nevertheless, we can still rewrite this as x minus 3 over 2 to the k, which is equivalent to geometric series with an a value of 1 and an r value of x minus 3 over 2. So this series is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus r. when the absolute value of r is less than 1. And this means that it's going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus x minus well, 2. Which simplifies to 2 over 5 minus x we do a little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of algebra. So we have, what we have is that this infinite series converges to this function of x for all values of x um, in uh, this interval, which uh, is we need to determine using the fact that the absolute value of r must be less than 1. So to look and figure out when this is valid, we say, well, we know r is x minus 3 over 2. So this means that the absolute value of x minus 3 must be less than 2, which gives us our radius of convergence. This is our r for this problem. We have a radius of convergence of 2. And this is a radius of convergence of 2 around the center point 3. So our interval of convergence is going to be from x naught minus r to x naught plus r, or from 3 minus 2, which is 1, to 3 plus 2, which is 5. So for all x values in this interval of convergence, uh, this series converges absolutely to this function. To verify this, let's just open up the GeoGebra plot, and we'll take a look now um, at what we're seeing here, starting at n equals 0, and n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and I'll play this all the way up to that nth partial sum at n equals 20. Some of the first 20 terms in this polynomial We're seeing very clearly that we're getting some very nice convergence here of the partial sums to the actual function on this interval from 1 to 5, the interval of convergence. And if I change this to a high value of n, like 200, now you're really clearly seeing that this is converging very nicely on this interval. So this is uh, very, very neat. So just a note for uh, notational purposes, right? I uh, talked about earlier in the very beginning of the lecture how a um, 
a power series centered at x not equal to zero is a series of this form. Um, but uh, this is not definitely not the most general type of power series as we've seen in this last example. Um, so the the general power series. centered at some value x naught is of the form k equals zero to infinity of c k times x minus x naught to the k. So it's like a shifted polynomial. But what we want to do right now is get an idea of how we can go through and determine the uh, uh, radius of convergence for such a general series. And the, the idea here is that um, we can go through and use the, either the ratio test or the root test to figure out um, what this radius of convergence is. This is uh, radius of convergence is the largest distance away from the center point that this series will be absolutely convergent. Um, and so we know that uh, the, uh, either the ratio test or the root test will determine for us if the series is um, absolutely convergent or not, or if it's divergent. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a k plus 1 over a k. Remember, our series is of the form c naught plus C1 times x minus x naught plus C2 times x minus x naught squared, and so on and so forth. So A naught is this, A1 is this, A2 is this, and in general, AK is CK times x minus x naught to the K. So this equation is the same thing as the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of ck times x minus x naught to the k to k plus 1, to get plus 1 here, divided by a k, which will be ck times x minus x naught to the k. So this is a k plus 1 divided by a k. And for any value, right, b to the k plus 1 over b to the k, this will always just be equal to b to the 1. So this simplifies to the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of ck plus 1 over ck times the absolute value of x minus x naught to the k plus 1 over x minus x naught to the k, which is just x minus x naught. Remember, this is a row value from the ratio test. So this is going to be the same thing then as the absolute value of x minus x naught times whatever the limit as k goes to infinity of ck plus 1 over ck is. And what we're looking for with the radius of convergence is all points x where the series is absolutely convergent, which is all points where this row is strictly less than 1. And so we have a very nice inequality here from the ratio test that says that x minus x naught 
must be strictly less than 1 over the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of ck plus 1 over ck, which is exactly this value right here is exactly our r. Equivalently, you could uh, rewrite this limit. It'll be the same thing as the limit as k goes to infinity of ck over ck plus 1. So really, either of these two equations will work for defining r. This is super neat because this is super general, right? The, the first three examples that I showed were all, uh, in one sense or another, geometric series. But this formula is general. It holds for any power series uh, that you want to consider and that you can figure out this limit for. Um, by the way, uh, I'm not going to go through the derivation right now, but you could also do this derivation uh, with the root test as well and get a similar formula for the radius of convergence, which is very neat. And I definitely encourage you to go through and do that because um, uh, it's it's good practice in kind of manipulating these, these objects and kind of feeling more comfortable uh, going through and doing these calculations. So just to summarize uh, the possible cases that we can have for a given power series, if um, assume that the following series um, is a, a power series, an infinite power series, you have three possibilities for the radius of convergence. First one is that R is a positive real number, it's less than infinity, and between zero and infinity. So this is going to be this first case right here. Oh. There is a positive radius of convergence R such that the series above diverges for x outside of the radius of convergence. So when x minus x naught is strictly greater than r, but converges absolutely for x such that the absolute value of x minus a is strictly less than r. And uh, the sticking point here is that the series may or may not converge at either of the endpoints. The endpoints being uh, the endpoints of the interval of convergence, x naught minus r and x naught plus r. So in general, if we want to find the true interval of convergence, we need to also, you know, we could check we find the, the radius of convergence and then we also need to check the convergence at the endpoints uh, where the series may be uh, convergent but it might only be conditionally convergent at the endpoints so that's really an important point to point out 
But uh, the second possible case that we have is that this radius of convergence is infinity, in which case the series above converges absolutely for all x. And the third possible case is uh, the worst possible case where the 2 is the best possible case. 3 is the worst possible case where the radius of convergence is 0, which means that the series converges only at the center point, x0, and diverges elsewhere. So these are the three possible cases that we can uh, will always have for a power series. So for the final part of this lecture, what I want to do is go through and talk about uh, various different operations that we can do on power series. And this is going to help us in manipulating and figuring out uh, how to work with power series in the applications. So the first operation is multiplication. Now I want to point out that um, in the following, we're going to assume that um, R is the radius of convergence, the minimum radius of convergence for two separate power theories, X and Y. And I'm going to center these at zero just to make the calculations a little bit simpler but um, it's possible to do them in general as well. Um, but we're going to assume that x is less, strictly less than r, where r is a radius of convergence for two separate power series called 1a of x, which has coefficients a, k, and b of x, which has coefficients Bn. So uh, if we multiply two series together, a of x times b of x we can always do this uh, and actually get a very nice formula for the coefficients that is a little bit unwieldy, but um, is just based on uh, the idea of the distributed property, so the FOIL property, but doing this out uh, infinitely many times. So um, this double, this is going to be a double summation now from k equals 0 to infinity of the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a k times b n times x to the k x to the n. And what we're doing here is saying we have a naught plus a1 x plus a2x squared, and so on and so forth, and then uh, b0 plus b1 plus or b1x plus b2x squared, and so on and so forth. But what you want to notice is that x to the k times x to the n is the same thing as x to the k plus n, and so um, we will we'll actually able to rewrite this double summation as a single summation with special coefficient c. 
you can kind of see this if you multiply out the first few terms, right? If I do a naught, I'm going to have a naught times b naught. Then you're going to have a naught times b one x. plus b naught times a1 x so a1 times b naught x plus the a2 x squared times b naught plus a1 times b1 x so a1x times b1x, which is a1 b1x squared plus, lastly, b2x squared times a0. And this process is going to continue infinitely long. And we can do this FOIL out for every single combination of terms in this series. But what you hopefully see here is that what we get is this will be a naught b one plus a one b naught times x plus a naught b two plus a one b one plus a two b two b naught times x squared, which continues further uh, infinitely long. Um, what we call this value c naught, this value c one, this value c two, and so on and so forth. What we have here is another power series from. Um, L equals zero to infinity of C L times B or times X to the L where C L has the formula A naught times B L plus a1 times bl minus 1 plus a2 times bl minus 2 and so on and so forth all the way up to a l minus 1 times b1 plus a l times b naught. And this is uh, our general formula for the product of two power series. It's a new power series with these coefficients CL that originate from the first power series. And you can see this pattern very clearly in these first three terms that I've uh, put out right here. Just a result of doing a very big, big, infinitely long FOIL on this product of power series. So this is our first big operation, which is multiplication. We'll do an example of this in a second. But I also want to do another operation uh, called substitution, which is, uh, believe it or not, even more uh, powerful in some sense than multiplication. Um, but it's uh, super, super, super useful. So multiplication is often very useful. And substitution is uh, extremely useful. So this is the statement that um, uh, where we assume that our a of x converges absolutely for uh, absolute value of x less than some radius of convergence r. The substitution property says that if f is a continuous function, 
So if f of x is a continuous function, then the series with the function f of x substituted in for f, the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of the terms um, ck times f of x to the power of k, the series that we get when we substitute f in uh, for x in the power series, converges absolutely if, or let's say on the set of points, where the absolute value of f of x is strictly less than the radius of convergence. So we can do some really, really neat, powerful things with this. Uh, and to show this, uh, I'll kind of do an example that involves both substitution and uh, multiplication. Suppose we want to multiply the following two series. We have the power series negative 1 to the k times x to the k, and k equals 0 to infinity, and you multiply this by the power series just 1 times x to the k. Well, using our multiplication formula, we know that this is going to be a new power series with a C0 value of negative 1 to the 0 times 1 to the 0 plus a C1 times x term, where C1 is going to be negative 1 to the 0 times 1 to the 1 plus negative 1 to the 1 times 1 to the 0. And the next term in this is going to be c2 times x, where c2 is negative 1 to the 0 times 1 squared, plus negative 1 to the 1 times 1 to the 1, plus negative 1 squared times 1 to the 0 times x squared. And uh, this is not all, right? There will be infinitely many more terms in this sum. Uh, they get definitely much more cumbersome to calculate as you go up. So we'll just stick with these first three terms here and we'll look at what these values are. This first value C0 is 1. This next value C1 is 0. Plus this next value C2 ends up being 1. So the multiplication of infinite series of these two series ends up looking like 1 plus x squared, and so on and so forth. This is the infinite series that's generated by this multiplication. To check this, we can use our substitution property, because we know that this series is the same thing and converges to 1 over 1 minus negative x. And this series converges to 1 over 1 minus x. Which is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus, or 1 plus x times 1 minus x. Or 1 over 1 minus x squared. from the substitution theorem, so we know this series is going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared. We you know this is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus r, where r is equal to x squared. 
that's the same thing as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of r to the power k. In r is x squared. It's the same thing as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x squared to the power k. which we immediately recognize as the sum that we're calculating using the multiplication. It's the same thing as the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the 2k, or 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 6th, and so on and so forth. So what I've just done in this example is showing you how to use both the substitution theorem and the multiplication theorem uh, in a specific example and that they work out really, really nice. Now, uh, I do think it's important to point out that um, we need to go through and uh, look at the radius of convergence and just make sure that everything's uh, working fine here. And, uh, by the substitution formula, or the substitution theorem, uh, this uh, equality that I just wrote down, and this uh, 1 over 1 minus x squared is equal to this sum when the absolute value of this r is less than 1, which is when the absolute value of x squared is less than 1, um, which is the same thing as saying the absolute value of x has to be less than the square root of 1 but because the square root of 1 is equal to 1, we don't have any issues here. But uh, this is something very important that you need to uh, make sure is verified when you do the substitution theorem. Because if this uh, radius of convergence were not 1, say it were 5 or 3 or something, then uh, this step would only be valid uh, when the absolute value of x is less than the square root of r, uh, where r is the capital R. For example, if uh, you had uh, the radius of convergence of this series was capital R, because we're doing x squared, and that's what we substituted in, um, we would have that this step would only be valid when absolute value of x were less than this R right here. So be very, very careful. And so the last real uh, operation that we should talk about and define um, is differentiation. And or, just do and or integration of A given power series. And this is often called term by term differentiation or integration of a given power series. The main result we have is that uh, as long as we're inside the radius of convergence, the absolute value of x minus x naught is less than r, the series is absolutely convergent, uh, we can take the derivative of uh, the series and the integral of the series in a term-wise manner. So like I said before, this is say a of x, no, just I'll call it f of x for short. Then the derivative of that exists. And not only that, the derivative of this series is the same thing as 
uh, the term by term derivative. So f of x is c naught times plus c1 times x minus x naught plus c2 times x minus x naught squared, and so on and so forth. And f prime is going to be the derivative of a constant, which is 0 plus the derivative of c1 times x minus x naught, which is just a constant c1 plus 2 times c2 times x minus x naught, and so on and so forth, all the way up. So the derivative is going to be the summation of k equals 1 to infinity of k times ck times x minus x naught to the k minus 1. Which is just a term by term differentiation of every single term in this sum. So this is a very, very neat rule. And it turns out that for the indefinite integral, the antiderivative, we have the exact same rule that uh, the integral of some function, this function f of x dx, will be some constant c plus the term by term antiderivative of each one of these terms. This is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of ak over k plus 1 times x minus x naught to the k plus 1. which is a very neat and very powerful two rules for us because it allows us to go through and uh, very confidently uh, use what we know from Calc 1 and Calc 2 to manipulate series in regions of absolute convergence. So uh, these two things, remember, are only valid as well as the multiplication and the substitution if we're obeying the, uh, the radius of convergence in the region we're talking about. So for our final example of this, I'm going to go through and show how to find the power series representation for the tangent function. And remember that the x derivative of the arctangent function is 1 over 1 plus x squared, which we can recognize as a geometric, geometric series of sorts. This is geometric series 1 over 1 minus negative x squared, or 1 over 1 minus r, when r is equal to negative x squared. So this is 1 over 1 plus x squared, remember, this is equal to the summation then from k equals 0 to infinity of r to the k which is the same thing as the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of negative x squared to the k. So we've shown that 1 over 1 plus x squared is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over on negative 1 to the k 
k times x to the 2k. So if we take the antiderivative of both sides, we get that the uh, left hand side is going to be arc tangent of x. And from our theorem on term by term integration, this is going to be c plus the summation from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over 2k plus 1 times x to k plus 1. Or arc pan of x is equal to the integration constant c, so some constant c, plus negative 1 to the 0 over 2 times 0 plus 1 times x to the 1, and then minus 1 third x cubed, and then plus 1 fifth x to the 5, and so on and so forth. So this is an infinite power series expansion for the arctangent function, which is valid. Remember, this has to be valid when um, absolute value of r is less than 1, which means for us this is valid when the absolute value of negative x squared is less than 1, or the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is a really neat and really powerful two theorems. We can also do this for differentiation as well. Uh, and there are a lot of good examples in the web work and also uh, in, in the book on how, how to do this. But uh, these three operations are probably the most important operations for manipulating series. And I think I've shown you how to do this uh, pretty well. Um, and just to kind of... Uh, give a, a final note on this power series lecture. What we've done for all of these examples is compute what's called the Taylor polynomial or the Taylor series um, expansion of these functions. So in the next lecture we're going to kind of dive a little bit deeper into uh, Taylor series and how to actually compute this series um, for a general function um, and we'll, we'll see it done for uh, a number of different relatively common functions. But for now, um, uh, you know, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you had a fantastic day and that you learned something.